Welcome again, dear brothers and sisters, to the celebration of the Catholic Mass here at the Fireside Chapel at St. Henry Catholic Church, Gresham, Oregon, on this the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. My name is Father Charles Sock, and I'm joined by our reader, Jerry, musicians, Barb and Joe, and our videographer, Sacristan and Greeter, Jim and Peggy. Let us now, as beloved children, welcome the Lord into our presence. Thank you. 
adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not of it, and whatever other commandment there may be, 
are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, Tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen. I say to you, who whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen. I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. lest we forget the foundation of Christianity. I repeat to you, we are beloved children of God. We are treasured by God. We are the apple of God's eye. That's where it starts. We can never forget that foundational principle and then today, Ezekiel gives us the prime directive. Could just as well have come from Jesus' own lips. God speaks to Ezekiel and to us. You I have appointed watchmen over the house of Israel. I have appointed you watch persons over the church. I will tell you what you are to say and how you are to act so that you might sway my beloved brothers and sisters to the way of God's will. But God said to Ezekiel, I'll hold you responsible, responsible for being a good watch person, a faithful one, a courageous one. And then God said, and if you do this, you will save your own life, not only your brother and sister. So today, 
I'm thinking in my mind of parents and grandparents who have said this down through the ages. I'm worried about my children and grandchildren. I'm worried about the bad choices they are making, that they stray from God and they're living precarious lives. These are numbered among the watch persons who are the best of teachers in the ways of faith, the first of teachers. They model to their children and grandchildren by their actions and they pray for their children and grandchildren. These parents and grandparents, which includes godparents and extended family members and friends, these are all appointed by God. God gives us wisdom. So these parents and grandparents have the wisdom to know that the decisions these dear children and grandchildren are making cause pain now and even more pain potential in the future. So they try to work their responsibility to be the best that they can. Pastors have to also get the admonition, be responsible. And it comes directly from the rule of St. Benedict of all things, directed to the abbot, but to anyone who is a watch person appointed by God. Here is how it reads. Abbot, know that you are ultimately accountable before the throne of God for every soul, for every monk in your care. Ultimately responsible. That's the challenge. We can be saved if we're good watch persons. But boy, in a society where Christianity is so counter-cultural, we need to hearken to the words of Jesus that he repeats in so many different ways throughout the gospel. I didn't promise you that your faith would be in the majority. I only promised you that I would always walk with you. How many times are we in the minority. A doctor once told me he was elated when he finally got accepted into medical school. So during those first few months of orientation, of the 98 in his class, he found out 95 of them didn't believe in God. He was in the minority. I visited with an employee one day who just got a job with 35 others on a crew. He found out that workforce, only 10 of the 35 belonged to any worshiping community. He was in the minority. Sadly, what's also in a minority in the lifetime of a marriage, how many spouses remain faithful? Sometimes a spouse will justify and rationalize by saying, what my spouse doesn't know won't hurt them. Some spouses are in the minority. The people in minority are Sometimes those who believe in pro-life. I've heard many Catholics say, I'm Catholic, I'm a practicing Catholic, but I believe in pro-choice. Pro-life Christians are seen to be in the minority. So Christianity is subjected to society's pressures. Christianity, we have to understand, is very countercultural, counter sometimes very difficult to stand up for a principle. It's too easy to be the silent minority. So today, 
We're here to announce that we believe. We announce that we need to come together where two or three are in my name. There I am in their midst. So we come here to recharge our batteries. There's nothing worse than going to the drawer, pulling out a battery, and it's dead. We need to recharge our batteries, especially during this COVID time, which is an especial challenge, to make sure we're close to the word and to sacrament. And each of us is told, I want you to be a watch person who's responsible, not only for others, but also to save your own soul. We have a tree out here that is the last of the tree in the Madonna worksite, Madonna Center. We've been trying to figure out how can we convince the powers that be that it needs to be taken down. Finally, an arborist came by and someone gave us the advice of how to phrase it so that it can be removed safely. It just so happens because it doesn't have a decent root system, it is what is called an imminent danger. So when you leave here, don't go anywhere near where the fell tree could hit you on the way out. We hope to take it down next week. That's what happens when people are in imminent danger. Their souls are at risk. So how much more important is our call from Ezekiel and from Jesus Christ to be responsible watch persons? The prime directive is that, but the foundational principle is, and we don't want to forget it, we are beloved children, treasured as the apple of God's eye. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand as we recite our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident of God's faithful love, we speak the prayers of our hearts. For the church, may our love of God and neighbor lead us to the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For civil servants who strive to end racial inequality and violence, may local leaders lead efforts toward reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive ourselves as well as those who have hurt us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor in unhealthy and life-threatening situations, may employers strive to improve their workers' conditions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the gift of their lives continue to enrich us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered together in worship for our special needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, giver of all that is good, unite our prayers with those of all believers and give us the blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, and Alexander and Peter our bishops, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. As we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Henry and Cunegunda, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace, giving glory and praise to God. Amen. Praise Amen. To God.